Welcome back to the Up North Pod, your coverage of the Big Sky Conference. That's Kyler, that's Alex, and we are pre previewing, previewing uh, the Portland State Vikings, their 2022 football conquests of the Big Sky. How are you guys today? I got I got a quick little, like, uh, let's get the debate debates going today. Let's get the juices flowing today. Uh, all right, so a little 50-50 a little here for you guys. If you had to live the rest of your life. With it being 100 degrees outside or 32 degrees outside, which would you choose, Alex? What kind of heat? What's the doesn't heat? matter. Just the, no, the no, it does matter. It does. The thermometer reads 100. It could where it might fluctuate. Because with okay, 32, where? too, it could be that sunny 32 where it feels warmer than 32. Where am I, where am I at? Houston or Arizona? Am I in Idaho or am I Juice. Here? Okay, I'll take a hundred. I'll take a hundred in Idaho. I did that all summer. I mean, a hundred in Idaho or hundred in Arizona, man. That, that's easy. But this is every day for the rest of your life, not just the summer. That's all right. The, you, it's, it always says a hundred. There's air conditioning. You got shade. I'll do that. You can do yeah. activities, and I, I ski. But I mean, I you know, I need some warmth at some point. Yeah. Give Kyle. me a hundred in Arizona every single day of my life. I can fly to ski. Now, if it's 100 degrees in Houston, where I currently live every single day, shoot me. Yeah, but 100 yeah. degrees in Houston or in Phoenix, I golf in 110 and I don't break a sweat. 100 is perfect there. It feels like 88 in Washington. I see. I'm a 32 degrees or man. I'm like, yo, you from get up, that you nice from up north? Yeah, I'm from up north. Uh, <laughs> I actually enjoy it when it's cold outside. But then, like I said, you're on the ski hill or whatever, like. You, you go out to a restaurant, it's one of those days where it's nice and sunny out and it's 32, but you're actually like, I'm okay in a long sleeve shirt out here. The sun is beaming down. I get my goggle tan on. I can deal with 32 as long as I get those occasional sunny days that make it feel more like 40, 50. I like the cold briskness of like winter. So did I. Like, I, I like sleeping up. with my window open and waking up and my room is freezing, but I'm under my comforter just like, oh boy, I got myself a little warm. Yeah, ball going. I can tell you lived on a frat porch. I, yeah. I definitely can tell you lived on the frat porch. Yeah, that's that's part of the issue. I can tell you lived on Delt's porch. I can it, tell. It is a P, it is PTSD from sharing a room with sixty you know guys what? where you aren't allowed to close the doors or windows. Yeah, in uh, Moscow in January. What a time. This, this more, debate uh, is way more entertaining scarring. than Portland State football. So let's just keep it up. <laughs> we just we just cracked cracked Chris's psyche before we even started talking about the Portland State Vikings. Uh, let's do a little quick. 2021 season in review. The Portland State Vikings went five and six, four and four in the Big Sky. Started one and three, finished four and three. Potential team getting hot. We'll discuss. Graduated the limit, the man, the legend, the poor man's Johnny Manziel, Davis Alexander, <laughs> uh, and they had a top 25 win at Weber State, who did not finish in the top 25, but they were mm. 25 when they beat them. It's a whole nother debate for do those count if they're no longer there. But uh, those are the notable takeaways from the 2021 Portland State Vikings season. Boatman, takeaways? Or what yeah, should, what should I, they I, take away? You know, the improvement at the end of the year in terms of your record, they were more, more frisky last year. They kind of reminded me of like a NAU-esque, just like they're just a bane of pain in your butt. Um Losing a quarterback, which I think I, – I mean, I, I, I watched Davis Alexander enough times to know that he was extremely important to that team. Um, that's going to be tough to replace. But as a whole, you know, especially with a top five team, top five roster that Portland State has, according to everyone, um, you should expect some growth. Yeah. Kyler, takeaways for the Portland State fans, the all 32 of them? Yeah, not, Portland State's a many. weird team, right? They're, they're just a weird team. And even last year, it was a weird team. They mm -hmm. beat all the teams they were supposed to, like your Southern Utah trash, Western Oregon trash, D2. Cal Poly was really bad. Idaho State, really bad. But what's crazy is they're kind of competitive in most of those games, even Western Oregon. Not a good D2 mm -hmm. program. They were competitive with them. They were competitive with... Um, you know, Cal Poly, who was really bad last year. They were competitive with Southern Utah, who was really bad last year. But then they beat R. Weber. And a healthy Weber at that. Weber wasn't injured like the first half of the season. This was a very healthy Weber. 
And all of a sudden, Portland State, they they were like, hey, we got Davis Alexander. We're going to run all over this guy. And they ended up doing what Eastern couldn't to Weber. So Portland State, really weird team. Um, Davis Alexander is a huge loss because in 2019 preseason, I said he was the worst quarterback in the big sky returning. And he retweeted that. And he said, I'll show you. And, uh, you know, three years later, he was one of the better quarterbacks in the big sky. So, you know, in the career, he continued to improve every single year. He got better. He was such an important aspect of that offense. And what can I say about this dude besides me trolling him and him proving me wrong a few years later? He was probably one of the toughest dudes in the big sky. Uh, I mean, Ask he took Montana fan. Yeah, he took some hits and he just got back up and delivered him again. This dude is extremely tough. So it'll be interesting to see what Portland State can do without them. Who are they reloading? But that's a big loss. Uh, but overall, what should you expect in the upcoming season? Probably a little bit more of what you had last season and the year before and the year before and the year before. Yeah, he, he was ultra consistent. Like, you knew what you were getting with Davis Alexander by the end yeah. of it, right? Like, you knew it was, like, very consistent. Yeah, R.I.P. You were no, never that's, nervous. That's a little dark. He didn't die. He just graduated. No, but you were <laughs> never nervous as a Portland State guy going, oh, no, Davis Alexander, he's going to lose me this game. No, you're right. always like, we have Davis Alexander. We have a shot in this game. Uh, right. Never, you know, not not an elite team, but they always had a shot, which was kind like of I would have killed that Dale, Davis Alexander at Idaho for the last couple of years. That's you know what I mean. So yeah, anyway, yeah, consistency is huge at the quarterback position, and we saw it. We Portland State went from bad to kind of right there with NAU, obviously because they're the next two teams in our preview of like the bar of the Big Sky. We don't make the playoffs. But, like, we're the teams that could maybe make those playoff teams sweat a little bit, and we should beat the team below us. That's what they were, and Davis Alexander was a huge part of that. And it will be interesting to see what they can take away from 2021 with the change of quarterback. Uh, speaking of which, let's move into the da 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 That's not right. The hot seat meter. Bruce Barnum, is he closer to the golden throne of all things Dots Pretzels? Or is the flaming recliner getting its shipping tracking device on its way to Hillsborough Stadium and under Bruce Barnum's desk chair? Boatman? Is is there such a nice chair as a golden throne in, in uh, Portland for this program? I mean, is I mean, is if Hawk... he could find one, he's got to find Listen, one. here's the thing. I I don't know. Like, if you're Portland State, you're the AD. Um are you able to hire a coach better than Bruce Barnum? Like, you know, yes. like, yeah, but just be happy that you're right here and you're not Southern, you're not Cal Poly right now or Northern Colorado. So we both have good coaches in theory, right? I mean, he, they finished ahead of him the last, they've been better. And they don't have the money to buy him out. So he's as safe as Zach Kloss is at Idaho this last year. <laughs> Is this his last year of his contract, Barnum's? I don't, do you know? I don't know where Bruce's oh, contract is. Uh, yeah. Tyler, what do you think? Is he on the hot seat meter? Where is he? Um, the here's the deal. He is still Portland State's most successful coach. Talk about coach. hot sauces. Yeah, he's still Portland State's most successful coach in the last 15 plus years, right? Since, since Tim Walsh. That was the last mm. time where someone had a better winning record than Bruce Barnum at .377. Yeah, he's in the hot seat, though. Um, his first year there, they went to the playoffs. They did not win the Big Sky, Chris. Beat but they Wazoo, went to the though. playoffs, and they beat two FBS teams that year. And then they continued to regress when they were utilizing his own players and recruits. That's never something you want to see, right? The first year you get the program, you're riding high, you're in the playoffs, you have two FBS upsets. Which FCS team does that? Only Portland State. And they murdered one by 66 to seven or some dumb score. I forgot what it was. North Texas. Um, and then I every single year after that. that. So what was that? I forgot. Though. Oh, yeah. They murdered him. It was like 66, <laughs> seven, 66, 10. It was not close. And then they beat oh. WSU right after or Oregon State. One of them. I think oh, WSU. God, it was WSU. Um, six, yep. That was my six, first six, year in Seattle. And I yeah. was like so excited to get to see a coup game. Like. In Seattle, oh, yeah, and that was the game. And, and uh, State, needless they got to say, I was like, that year they yikes. lost to Northern Iowa, who's always a solid, tough team. But they got a oh, seed that man. year, and then every year since, 
Bruce Barnum and Portland State's been trying to get back to that 2015 and it just seems to be pushing further and further away. Now, the Big Sky is getting a little bit better as well, so that makes it a little more tough. But um, I think he, the, the seat is starting to burn. I don't think it's a full hot seat yet because, you know, he still has to pay off his beer tab. So they're not going to let him off the hook until he pure, pays off his Hillsboro High beer tab. Um, hey, so it's peeking at my paper. That's to come. Oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, um, no, I mean, I, th- I think they're going to give him a few more years just because of the last three coaches before him really, really struggled. And at least he's been an improvement from them. Yeah. I think I kind of am a mix of your guys' answers. I think he should be on the hot seat. I don't think Bob, he's had the success. Bobby will I, hire him. I think if you look at Portland State is in a better situation let's say, than like a Sac State in terms of talent acquisition. And I think you could see a new coach, if they could find a Troy Taylor type, be able to do what Sac State is. They could replicate Sac State. When I mean, we're about to preview their roster. Their roster is stacked. They have a lot of talent on this team, which is why Bobby Houck and a bunch of people always say that they're a top-five team. Because in theory, if you just looked at their roster, they are a top-five team. Which then the you know variable there would be the coaching is not top five. Um, that or said, I think Boatman's right. I don't think they have the money slash the desire. This is a program that's looking at cutting football altogether. This is a program that got kicked out of their stadium by a NWSL team and can't even practice there. Can't even get one game there anymore. That Chris, that NWSL team draws like. Three times as many fans as these guys do. So it's true, but they only need a schedule around them for five games a year. Like the MLS does it, or like all the time with teams that play in NFL stadiums. You telling me that the NWSL can't schedule around five games? I mean, I guess the MLS would have to do it too, but like there's no. I think they bought that stadium outright. I think the Timbers did, and I think they pretty much told Portland State to F off. Yeah, they just said, get that. They said get the hell out. We Which that's what I'm saying. More. The university should have found a way to pitch in money or something. Or I've been to Portland State. The uh, giggling tortoise, laughing tortoise, laughing turtle, something like that is a bar down there. It's a pretty cool little spot. Now, you can't build a stadium downtown unless the NFL moves to Portland and they become the FCS's version of UNLV. Like, it's just not going to happen. And I just think this program does not care to fire him. So on like the level of Taco Bell hot sauces, which is how I decided at this moment, mild. we're going to be handling these hot seats to go. I'm going to go with, what is it? Mild. mild, hot, fire, and like fuego or something. Mild, medium, hot, fire, fuego. I'll go medium. He's hot, but like it's handleable hot. Um, and like because his order and everything just justifies that level of hot. And but, he's a likable guy. Yeah. He talks about putting... Uh, saloon doors on his office so he doesn't have a closed door policy but he has like a fun door policy or whatever the hell his quote was in 2020 it was ridiculous and he's obviously best friends with uh bobby Houck, so you know he's got a landing spot if he needs yeah it. he'll eventually be in missoula yeah exactly um but yeah so i think we all decide that's that's the hot seat meter for old uh mr bruce C. barnum let's cover the transfers <laughs> Interesting one. A lot of in because it's Portland State and they have all these kids from the Portland area that just freaking transfer back. Uh, D or defense, ooh, excuse me, defensive lineman EJ Ane, San Jose State. He was 2018 All Mountain West his freshman year. Uh, played in 40 games, but then moved to mostly of a reserve role. You remember that 2020 team was pretty stacked. Not crazy to think he just got out recruited. So he's transferring. Uh, DJ Gary or Jerry, G E R I, Theodore from Toledo. And if I'm not naming out stats, it's because there aren't any notable stats. That's just what people need to know. Uh, wide receiver, McLean Griffin, transfer from Boise State, Riverside Tech. Sorry. <clears throat> uh, linebacker, J-, J. Mason, Willingham uh, from Utah State. If I remember right, he was actually one who had a couple stats, but I just didn't justify giving them to him. Offensive lineman Pedro Timoteo from Fresno State. Uh, Running back Andrew Van Buren from Boise State. 45 games, 1,028 yards, 
21 touchdowns in his Riverside Tech career. Uh, defensive back Isaiah Avery from Liberty. And then punter George Triplett from Princeton. Mm. He was the punter Ooh. and kicker. Who, who transfers? For, oh, did he? Did he? Ta- he must have graduated because, yeah, because you can't play past. You can't play more than four years in the Ivy League. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Uh, like, who transfers punter, from, Princeton from Princeton to, to Portland State? State? Like, there's uh, a he's a better team. punter than a kicker, but he di- he can do both. He is on the roster as a punter, uh, which both. after see- seeing the Idaho game last year and literally getting in their kicker's head. Um, they probably need a kicker. Uh, but he oh. transferred out. Goodbye, Cody Williams to Maine. Uh, there's your transfer out. And then they bring in quarterback uh, Keegan Stan Cato from Utah Tech, formerly known as Dixie State. Uh, it's only one out and a couple in. Quick pro quo for the old Portland State Vikings. A lot of talent in. Some, some players that can add stuff immediately. And then some dudes that are just local guys that are coming back. Um Thoughts on any of the transfers, Boatman? Um, it just seems like transfer by volume and just hoping they stick. And this seems like a very Portland State-esque transfer window. Tyler? Yeah, um, I'm excited to see, you know, that that offensive lineman from Anchorage, right? He's a big dude. Uh, That's Pedro. Samoan guy? Yeah. yeah. Right, Samoan guy? Yep. Okay, because he's a, he's a pretty massive dude from what I remember, like 300 and. 20, 330 pounds. Do you yeah. have that? Or is it showing? Or maybe you're thinking of EJ on a, I didn't put their weights down. Okay. Uh, no. They had well, two offensive linemen. Yeah. But That's one Pedro. of them's from Alaska. Yeah. Yeah. From Anchorage. Yeah. That's Anchorage, Pedro. Alaska. That's that I Pedro. know. Team of Team of Toe. Yeah. Team okay, I, yeah. I originally marked the guys who weren't from the Portland or Washington, Southern Washington okay. area that were going to the team. He that is the, that is the typical protege Portland State offensive lineman from years past, right? Mass. Remember when they had that 480 pound monster? Yeah. I mean, Portland State has had a history of just getting these giant freak, big, thick, not fat. They're, they're you know, a lot of that Samoan build where they are just thick everywhere, just giant, a lot of muscle. So, I mean, it's a very Portland-esque thing, and I'm excited to see how, you know, he works out for him. Hopefully he gets an opportunity because I think he's a freshman, pretty young guy. Um, But other than that, the rest is kind of like what Boltman said. This is a commuter university, not just by recruiting, but by transferring, not just by traveling for school, but by transferring. Uh, So, I mean, this is a commuter university, and it shows even in their football recruitment. They're always going to get quite a bit of transfers. Yeah, and most of the transfers, like I said, are – Portland or South Washington ties. I mean, that, that is what they do. That is their MO. That is their Camus, amazing. If they get, I know Eastern has a giant pipeline with Camus. We steal a lot of people from them, but that's right in Portland's wheelhouse. And they recruit out of there too. Portland's got a, the Portland Metro area has some solid football players. I mean, it's, it's underrated. Jack Lane, Lake Oswego high school. Yeah. Yeah, CJ Jordan, Camus. Well, yeah. Easy, Chris. Hey, he was highly recruited. He did offer to Louisville before he tore his ACL. Victor uh, Lincoln, the guy who's now back at uh, Portland State, was you know four star that went to Nebraska. And then Half of Eastern's players Nebraska is worse Portland. than Portland State. So we Samson and Bukum. I yeah. mean, he was a Portland guy. They have currently on the roster when we get to impact players, Jojo C. O'Felly. Like they've got it's some a Bukum. Dudes. It's not Edukam. Is, a, is it a Bukum? A Bukum. The, the NFL's been saying it wrong all these years. Yeah. Samson E. Bukum. Yeah, because they say Ebukam. But yeah, that makes sense because that sounds very anglicized. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> so there we go. Anywho, uh, my big takeaway is obviously Andrew Van Buren is the big one. He's the one who's on the screen. The guy who actually is a producer. It sickens me to have to say Boise State so many times in one episode. But the transfer from Boise State – he is a guy who was a contributor. He was never the starter. He did get a solid crack at it when they're two dudes. I don't I don't know. I don't really pay that close attention. I know you think I would because I live here. But uh, uh, they had some kid from Oregon and some kid they were high on, and they both got hurt or whatever. And in 2020, Van Buren got a lot of the snaps. Um, I actually will admit that he was one of the guys that's kind of like, I kind of like this guy. Uh, all, now he's all gone. I see I, on that, all I, I see in that like picture is he doesn't respect the troops. So – Sorry. What? Oh, oh. Look at him. Look at that picture. Oh, you're right. He's stiff arming a freaking airman. 
Yeah, yeah Van Buren. I should have picked a better picture. Can't do it. Well, Can't do it. I hope well, you are all. fourth place on the depth chart, Van Buren. That's all you, you can't that's be all you need to know. in our service, man. Uh, so Matthew Frazee, this is a Matthew Frazee ran organization. As yep. We are veteran owned and operated by one guy, and we all take credit for it. So, tax breaks. Tax breaks. Uh, <laughs> uh, but he's, I mean, he's a thousand yard rusher, 21 touchdowns at a school that, you know, it's mm, at least considered average at the G5 level. So uh, <laughs> a big get for Portland State, I'll be honest. That They'll appreciate it. I'm still pulling for my boy Jojo Ciofelli, though. So take that, Van Buren. Um, not a Portland guy. He's from California. Hmm. Any other takeaways on transfers? Not transfers. Just, just kind of. Actually, Impact there players. is a transfer that I want to talk about. Because, yep. um, of course, the big news story for Portland State outside of Barnum and his bar tab is they lost Davis Alexander. We already mentioned it earlier in the podcast. So most of their quarterback room, which they have tons okay, of quarterbacks. Tyler, hold on. You're going too fast. Life without Dr. Davis, headline for right. Portland State. Well, because this was a transfer, so it was just rolling in. But <laughs> their QB room has a lot of young guys, right? There's nine sure. quarterbacks in the QB room, which to me, that's insane. It most bothers those- me looking at this Dang list that Chris put together. That was the thing I told you not to read ahead on. I was going to ask you how many quarterbacks you think they have on the roster. See, I'm not reading through any of this. I'm just putting it on my phone. <laughs> I got literally, I'm just looking at the roster. I, I prepared look- a beautiful outline. You're not even using it. I worked this- from 730 till two minutes before I jumped on here. I didn't got time for this. But um, the, that's the- why I did the whole outline. Give and, you all the information. Well, you're welcome. I don't look at this. You should know this from my FCS fans <laughs> nation one. I have not read one outline that Matt has ever sent me. Screw <laughs> that guy. I like to wing it. But um, so Nathan West. So he no, not Nathan West. Um, who is Steven? the guy from Nathan West? Tarleton. From no, from Tarleton. No, no, no. Oh, oh uh, the kid Mike Irwin. Mike is... Irwin Senior. Okay, yeah. yeah number zero. So that's that one of the, wearing zeros these days, dude. Yeah, it's a different game. Terrible. So that's like one of the only seniors on the roster for quarterbacks. I guess uh, Nathan West is a senior as well. But this guy actually had playing time last year at Tarleton State. And we know Tarleton State. Yes, they are a transitional FCS program. But they're one of the few programs who are probably going to go FBS before North Dakota State, which is pretty crazy. You know, they, they have a lot of high expectations for that program. And he didn't play horrible, right? It wasn't versus top tier mm. competition. Um, so he he got some playing time in six games at least for Charleston State versus some D two, some D one. We'll see. But like he's probably the most experienced guy in the quarterback room on their roster. So it'll be interesting to see just one of the arguably more talented freshmen that Oregon or Portland State has take the leading role, or are they just gonna basically lead on? This one guy from Tarleton State as a transfer. Who's going to get the job? I'm not sure. So let me cover all the quarterback room, all nine of them. So buckle in, grab a drink, order a second, get to the back of the line and get ready to order your second one. Cheers. I'm going to need a minute. Let me get to take a drink on that before I go. Wet the whistle, as it were. Number zero, Mike Irving, senior. Oregon walk-on, then went to Garden City Community College, then transferred to Tarleton State. At the community college level, he went 55 of 111, or that can't be right, something yards, four touchdowns, no INTs. I think it was 55 of 11 passing. I forgot the yardage. Fun fact, after community college, he had one scholarship offer, and that was to the Idaho State State Bengals. Um, And the FCS, he decided to go to Tarleton State. He went 11 of 26, 135 yards, one touchdown, no interception. You have uh, technically true freshman, uh, number five, Jaden Casey, who's a former three-star. He was the number 20 pro quarterback prospect in the 2019 recruiting class. And he's rich. He is Calabasas. Yeah. He is a Cal transfer, originally committed to Fresno State before decommitting. He had, count him up, one, two, three, 21 scholarship yeah, offers but like did he actually have 21 offers because he wouldn't he be a Portland 247 State. sports there's a disclaimer 20 of those were fbs 12 of which were power five including the likes of obviously fresno alabama arizona arkansas iowa state kansas state yeah 
<laughs> we saw Zarek no. Cooper have that too. He was a I just don't believe true. a lot of those some, at this true. point. I'm just, hey, I'm just reading resumes here. We're the hiring committee. We get to hire who we want. They sent He's us from the Calabasas. Resumes. He's got we money. Gotta read them. Connections. Uh, the type of guy who went to camps nonstop and his parents bought him an offer pretty much. Anyway. Number nine, Nathan West. Oh, my God. You're probably right. <laughs> number nine, Nathan West. He is the other senior. He's from O'Day High School. He was a team captain at O'Day. O'Day, a NFL factory for high yeah. school. He's a Juco guy. Um, it went to Who's Orange, Juco? I think. Um then number 10, Keegan Stan Cato. He's a freshman. We transferred. He's a transfer from Dixie State. He is from Mountain Ridge High School in Tacktown, Washington. Uh, Kyler, how is Mountain Ridge at high school? You're a Tacoma High School expert. Trash? So probably not the guy. Number 12, uh, Dondre Fair. He's a freshman, two star athlete from Jefferson High School, right there in down, well, not downtown, just north of downtown Portland. Uh, he walked on to Portland State. Gosh, he had so many two, quarterbacks. He had two offers. <laughs> this cracks me up. I'm sorry. When one to Indiana, <laughs> and the other was William and Mary. Well, okay, real quick, let's pause. <laughs> pause. How do Time you out. how do you walk on to Portland State with an alleged offer to Indiana and William and Mary? All right, here's my guess. What the William and Mary frick? in Indiana probably he was an athlete. My guess offered him like running back DB something like that. Portland State probably gave play him quarterback walk on at quarterback or they pulled it and then they didn't tell him they were recruiting eight other people to be in that quarterback room. <laughs> I mean they they might have pulled an offer. We see that from time to time. Yeah. And then I mean, they did, but I'm saying like even at that point, how do you get to a point where your offers are William and Mary in Indiana? That's it. Like those are your offers. How do yeah. you like? I don't pull opposite of the pull. spectrum. Hey, from the West Coast, how how do we arrive bottom at that tier point? big three team? Hey, from from the arrive? West Coast, that's interesting. Bottom tier yeah. power five or bottom tier FCS power or big three. Uh, then you have I, number fourteen Logan I, Gonzalez, also a freshman, geez. three star out of Orange, California. He had one other offer to Nevada. Uh, number fifteen Dante Chichir. He's a redshirt sophomore, nine games. Um, he was Davis's primary backup at his time at uh, the old green and white. And he had one other offer to Nevada as well. Nevada just losing quarterbacks in Portland State left and right. Number 16, Brooks Ferguson. That's a quarterback name right there. Yeah, Brooks. He's, and he's a quarterback Ferguson. size. Six yeah, five. No, he he well, sounds like he's six five. Well, you're he's funny, six. Kyler, because uh, once again, you're reading ahead here. Uh, the only <laughs> stats I was able to find on good old Brooksy uh, was that he's a former two star, and Barnum praises him for being six five and local. <laughs> there, there, there you know what, with a name like Brooks Ferguson, it makes sense he's six five. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't even really find anything else about him other than no, Bruce right. Barnum says he really likes his size. How was uh, Idaho? How did I only win four games with these rosters? Anyway, <laughs> just, and. Finally, I promise I'm done after this. Number 17, Caden Filer. He's a true freshman, two-star from Lincoln High School in Tacoma, Washington. You're on the water, correct? No. No? Where'd you go? I went to Puyallup. I went to Rogers High School in Puyallup. Rogers, that's it. Sorry, I mixed up Rogers and Lincoln. Yeah, Uh, you should. They're two different cities, you bum. Are they rivals? No, they play. One's in Tacoma, and one's in Puyallup. That's true. They play three A. We school, play big boy so. football. <sighs> is Lincoln so Bellevue the one three, that runs my three Hogwarts? A. Lincoln is the one. Yeah, is Lincoln Hogwarts? Yeah, Lincoln's the one that looks. You know, it's got the ten things I hate about Jew Stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah where it's like yeah, right it's on the bay, pretty. and it looks. Well, yeah, that's like, that's state. I thought that was Stadium High. No, that is Stadium. Yeah, that's Stadium High School. Oh, that's Stadium okay. High. Sorry, we took you guys down that terrible tangent. Uh, his other offers were the University of Puget Sound and Rocky what? Mountain. Great but he company. was listed as medium to cool. Wow. On Eastern Washington. So great company there. You know, UPS has a nice campus. I do recommend. Yeah. Yeah. You get old Man. UPS down in Tech Town. Yeah. It's but uh, it's, I think it's, it's safe to say we're probably gonna make the cutoff at the first seven. <laughs> I would say Dante Chichir's probably. I mean, he was the backup for Davis. He's gonna get a shake at it. 
I guess this all went numerical, so this could be very different. But uh, yeah. who do you guys think has an honest shake at this job, and who do you oh, think is going to no, win? No freaking clue. All man. of them? I mean, <laughs> 11 I games, think, nine quarterbacks? Who, I guess who do I think doesn't have a, a fair shot at the job? The two guys at the bottom, probably Logan Gonzalez, because he's also a freshman. Anyone who's a freshman, I'm going to kind of probably discount just because they might not know. That's um, seven of their nine. <laughs> well, but some of those guys have transferred to other programs and like our red shirts, right? Right. Yeah. Anyone who's like a true freshman. Um, I feel like Mike Irwin Sr. I just call him Mike Irwin Sr. Even though it's Mike Irwin. This is, it's a late night on the East Coast. <laughs> um, Mike Good Irwin. Sky dark. <laughs> <laughs> Great time. Mike Irwin, I feel like should have an inside track. Well, I mean, Dante Shashir obviously should have the inside, inside track in his job. So that's my analysis. He's Barnum, Barnum guy. Uh, Kyler, who do you think are like in the competition? Who, if you're Barnum, who you rolling out there week one, if you weren't allowed to do, you know, spring or training camp or watch Let, film or anything like yeah, that? Yeah. So let's say Dante. It's purely measurable. So I'm going to say Dante. Um, I'm going to name three. So Dante. And then I think we got to go with, um, Jaden Cassie, Calabasas guy, right? A lot of camps. Um, and then we got to go with Mike Irwin from Tarleton State. Those are going to be the three that I think has the best shot to win the starting role. And that is strictly without doing any research. These guys might be the bottom three. On Measurables the only. Yeah. This is uh, just me looking at their names. If they've played a little bit. And that's so we're bad. basically like two, four, seven sports. We're just going off measurables. We're not watching. We're, film. We're, I mean, can we, here, can we talk about something else? Sure. Their running back room has the best college football names. Um, Andrew Van Buren, amazing. Amir McGee, amazing. Jojo, amazing. Quincy Craig, amazing. Joby Malloroy, amazing. They got some cool running back names. That's all yeah. I got to say. That's about so it. So I'll go real quick with my picks then, and then I do want to touch on the running backs. Uh, Mike Irwin Sr., I think, is in it. I mean, they didn't bring him in for... <laughs> For Mike nothing. Irwin oh my Sr. god, I did it too. <laughs> well, I, I, I see what it is, is because phonetically I put SR after his name to designate that he's a senior. So I see how you did that though. Uh I'm <laughs> he's 22, he's got three kids. <laughs> Mike, Mike Irwin Sr. I was like, I was like, damn, I mean, I, mean, I think we just possible, but... for everybody else, Big Sky Podcast Network, everybody. It is number zero, Mike Irwin Sr. Um, I think Jaden Casey's probably in it. I mean, former, I don't care if his parents paid for camps. He was the number 20 pro cross prospect. It's those offers are all legit and it's, they're all for quarterback or whatever. Yeah. He was neighbors. Um, with either the way, he did commit to Cal and uh, had an offer to Fresno state. So he's at least, we know G5 P bottom P5. Yeah, he can throw so. the ball. Uh, I think he's good. I like Nathan West just because he's done the Juco thing and he's O'Day, which I feel like is a big thing for guys out of California. You look at Goff and guys like that. Um, and then, that honestly, that John Dre Fair, strictly off measurables, I know he kind of looked like he had the size and ability to be a good quarterback. So I'll go with those guys. Um, and then, obviously, I'll give Dante a shake. Because he deserves a shake. He's been the backup for two years. He's so. six foot one eighty. But I've if been I, down you here put reading. money right now, well, let's all draft one of these guys. Oh, I've been we'll down here reading. The season. Been, as you see, that crouch down and read my iPad. It sounds like it's gonna be gonna be Shashir. So, oh, you've been reading. You think it's Shashir? Yes. Is that who you're gonna yeah. draft? Yeah, We're gonna yeah, compare yeah. at the end of the season how these quarterbacks did. He's one one. He's he's one one. All right, you're taking one one. Yeah, Kyler, because we can literally each get three of them. So okay, if I if I have to producing on the um, fly, yeah. Let me let me grab um Jaden Casey. Okay, mm-hmm. Kyler is taking Jaden Casey. I will take good old Irwin Senior. No, I wanted Mike Irwin. And we are doing this as a snake draft, of course. <laughs> the, the dumbest podcast of all time. <laughs> uh, I will take. I kids I'll are take doing. Nathan West with my second pick. Solid, solid pick. Uh, then Kyler. Yeah, give me a uh, DeAndre Fair. I like I like kids from Jefferson. Okay, Wait, DeAndre who's available? Fair. Who's available right now? Uh, you Keegan? have Keegan, Keegan Brooks, Stan Cato. You have Logan Gonzalez, Brooks Ferguson, and Caden Filer. All right, so we're gonna go Keegan just because 
he's mentioned. And then purely <laughs> because he's he's six five and has a great quarterback name. <laughs> We're gonna Brooke pick him because he's mentioned. <laughs> Maybe the steal of the draft. Brooks Ferguson at pick seven. <laughs> Solid. Uh Kyler, your pick. Yeah, uh, yeah Logan Logan Gonzalez with Caden Filer. You know uh, what? Looking at it, Logan Gonzalez. Logan Gonzalez looks like he knows how to throw the ball. Are you guys and he's from Orange, right California. Now? Orange Lutheran. Wait, Are who's on Mason film? Packler? Why is he not on this list? Is that the athlete? Oh, no. This he's changes from... everything. I don't know. I'm just he goes there. to the fans. The fans get Mason Packler. Mason oh, Packer is an he's, athlete. He's listed as athlete. I saw that oh. guy, and I thought about throwing it on, but reading off 10 quarterbacks. And he's from Skyview. Solid program. In Washington? Hey, have, yep. That might be their actual his, starter, dude. Do you read his bio? Good no, all-around athlete capable of playing a lot of positions. A red shirt in 2021. <laughs> so we just did a draft that's not going to matter. It's going to be the Skyview. What are they? The Hawks? No, they're the Spartans. Yeah. It's going to be the Skyview Spartan. Uh, all right. I'll take Caden Filer because he was mild to medium on good old Eastern Washington, who wasn't mild or medium on him. Hey, and Gage was a walk-on. Hey, there you go. Hey. Baker Mayfield was a walk-on. There you walk-ons go. Walk-ons do good things. Mike was Irwin it Minshew senior. a walk-on? That's the steal of the draft is Mike Irwin Sr. It is. I'm glad I got good old Mike Irwin Sr. Number zero. Number zero, <laughs> but number one. <laughs> That's, in the the That's the best part. Uh, all right. We got to get through this headline. Barney's Bar Tab. Before you guys uh, – you know what? Before I read ahead, because you guys have been doing great without reading ahead, Take with this headline what you will. What do you want to talk about, Barney's Bar Tab, before I make it a subjected, uh, guided discussion? Here's the deal. I, I I think this was such a cool ploy to get fans in the stands. Do you um, think he actually paid it, or do you think the marketing team paid it? I listened to a, a, a podcast or some type of thing that had Barnum on it, and he talked Wait. about this. Uh, the Believe in FCS podcast. They had Bruce Barnum on talking yeah. about it. Yeah, those Joe hacks DeLeon. had Barnum on? The Hacks, Joe yeah. DeLeon, yeah. Sean Anderson had him on. Oh, those guys. My yeah. least favorite specialist? Yeah, it was like a 15-minute segment. And um, for one, he said this is a very fake receipt. I think he said, he said, or he said, how the hell did they get my receipt? It was something crazy, but I'm pretty sure it's a fake receipt. But he said it was like 14000 something, and he paid it. He, yeah. he no, did not I, anticipate it. Portland State, I mean, we're going to be honest here, right? Like, Portland is a beer town. Town? There's no, we got the Yinzer going on. You got a little Yinz going on, huh? A little Yinz. We got to go. was giving us the West Virginia accents before we started in the back in the green room. Now we all got Yinza from the West Virginia. What Yinz doing after this, huh? Huh? There's no way a city like Portland. I know Portland State don't have the. Classy, I don't want to say unclassy, but like they have to drive the Hillsboro and like they're probably more blue collar, like let's chug Coors Light guys than we would like to expect. There's almost no way that almost double the beer or Coors Lights than the shoots. Those people love their shoots out there. I That's could it. see it being in a football game. Uh, also, because they're probably just really nice people, they're probably like, hey, Coors Lights, $2 cheaper than the shoots. They're like, oh, well, we're not paying, so we don't want to charge Bruce. So they, they See, Portland's known to be the city full of nice citizens. They're nice people. <laughs> Shut up. Um, no, but like, if you're drinking a lot, oh, with the care, an IPA or a Coors Light, <laughs> even if you don't like Coors Lights and you like IPAs, if you're drinking in a football game, you're normally having a light beer for the majority of it. I could see it. Speak for yourself, dude. Nooners only. <laughs> Uh, but when you got any takeaways on Barney's beer garden, good for him. <laughs> All right. So then me being the marketing mind that I am, I want to know on the marketing side of this, this game was the Western Oregon game, which took place September 18th. Uh, we touched that at 1000. If these numbers are accurate, 1,260 cool Larry's 786 to shoots IPAs, a uh, total of $14,448. This led to an attendance of 3,124 people for the Western Oregon game. Do you think attendance went up or down after this gimmick? 
All I know is who. Oh, my bad. I I was going to say whoever did the receipt just did really bad math. Um, If you Mm. add those beers together, it's not (laughs) 2064, but it's fine. Uh, All right. But when Portland State. Oh, boy. Yeah. What the hell? Um, All I'm going to say is I think I think it increased at least three, three games. Okay, it went, uh, it went Tyler, over yeah. or under the rest of this. Uh, like, how many games were above the gimmick that got? Oh, no, it went down. People? It went down. I saw some of uh, the, yeah, I, I've seen some of their attendance numbers last year. It was not pretty. Here's the difference they had a really strong, in terms of attendance, home schedule last year. Montana State brought in 4,013. Because this is the thing Portland State. Is an amazing away game because, well, till recently, before they are the only stadium that sold beer to everybody, no special tickets required because it was the baseball stadium. You just walked up like you're at a baseball game, bought beer, and went back to your seat for like three bucks. Four thousand. I remember when I went for Idaho, it was like seventy percent Idaho fans, thirty percent Portland State fans. Twenty nineteen sold out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got my car broken into that weekend in Portland. But I had a great time in Chinatown. Probably, yeah. So. It was poor, yeah. Because I saw you down there. Yeah. But it was, it's a fun place to go. So a lot of away fans go, especially when out west. Portland is fourth, fifth, probably best city for most of the Big Sky alumni to move to Seattle, Denver, uh, Salt Lake, San Francisco, and then probably Portland in terms of like jobs. So it's popular and there's a lot of alumni in the area. Idaho State was lower, 1,809, probably because they had no way fans. Cal Poly, they had 3,245 fans. Eastern Washington, they had 3,971. So they actually only had one game that season, Idaho State, have less fans than they had against Western mm-hmm. Oregon. Now, we probably needed this because nobody wanted to go watch them play Western Oregon. So at the end of the day, do you guys think this was a good marketing ploy? And yeah. for our schools that may or may not be listening, for if you are going to schedule a D2 game, is this a good idea? Both no, me. because most of Tyler? our schools are still going to have quite a bit more people. Uh, so I, I don't think our, our coaches want to take a but Kyler, tenth like, of their put, salary. Let's put it this way, because you've talked about this before. You guys are playing – BFE team from BFE New Hampshire D3 that week before students get on campus. Would this get the people from Spokane to go to an Eastern game? No. You don't think free beer would get people to go? No, to drive to Genie? No. Okay. That's fair. I mean, Moscow doesn't really matter because, like, nobody lives in the city of Moscow. Boatman's Town's the closest freaking town and what is it, 35 minutes up a hip freaking – Eight percent grade. It's not that bad. It's all four people, lane. But you're not doing it with free beer in your stomach. The people who want to come Uber from Spokane down there. Have you ever Where Ubered from going? Moscow to Lewiston? What is it? No, I've never done that. That'd be insane. Yeah, it sounds expensive. So, ain't nobody in Moscow going for the free drinks. I guess my opinion. I would love it if that happened. Is all I'm saying. Maybe I'll just become a Portland State fan next time they do it. Oh God. Um, anyways, let's move into the stuff that people really care about. And get out of here. Can we, uh, can we mention one thing though? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Cause we did not talk about this guy and he needs, he needs to be talked about Anthony Adams. Yes. Arguably outside NFL of maybe prospect. Ford, the best DB and even the FCS in general. Right. Um, so again, we didn't talk about him. I just had to throw out his name there. Anthony Adams, you deserve all the credit you can get. Hope you kill it this year. Hope you kill it in the NFL. You're definitely going to make the NFL. Um, so keep it up. Hope no injuries. But I just wanted to, you know, pull out that guy's name because he's a super stud. Yeah. And I forgot to go back to quarterbacks or running backs after. JoJo Ciafeli is my guy. I went to that Such state cool title name. game when they beat Lake Stevens. And there was guys with offers going everywhere. Alvashawn Taylor, all these dudes that got offers everywhere. And he was like the one guy who didn't have an offer going into that game. And I walked away going he was the best player on Union's team. And I wished Idaho would have signed him. I have been looking for him to have a breakout season ever since. I believe with COVID, he's only like a redshirt sophomore. JoJo Ciofelli, 
this is your season, my man. You got one fan down here in Idaho pulling for you. You tore it up in the tack dome that day. And I look forward to you doing it in Hillsboro. Hopefully with Barnum buying me beers here in the future. Uh, 2022 football schedule. They open it up week one. They also go back to back FBS games. But week one, they got the San Jose Spartans, the 2020 Mountain West champs. Boatman, are they beating Spartans? No. San Jose State sucks, but so does Portland State. So two sucks less. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go. They actually get the oh, wait. San Jose State's good now, right? No. They just, were. I've, and then yeah, they, they, they right confuse back. me because sometimes they're good, then they suck, then they're good again, and they suck again. They've been good once. I don't know. No, they have a couple good years. Anyway. Anywho, I'm picking Portland State. Portland State has a kind of a history of being frisky against the FBS. They do. So I think San Jose State is a winnable game. Thursday Field night. Port- Portland State Vikings, week one. San Jose State's going to have zero freaking clue which of these nine and a half quarterbacks they might be starting. Uh, advantage Portland State. Can you imagine that they just line up, just have a center, and then nine quarterbacks and like a wide receiver, and that's just their entire offense? <laughs> That'd be wild. Uh, anywho, uh, Kyler, win loss, Portland State. Man, here's the deal because San Jose State arguably is one of the worst FBS teams right now. And like if if they were playing a good big sky team, definitely a shot to win. Um, this is like a 45 55 game, which mm. is really weird because Portland State's not good. San Jose's that bad. I'm gonna lean towards San Jose State winning. Um, but I, I think Portland State definitely does have a shot for an upset. Yeah. Uh, what about the next week at UW? Boatman, I'm just going to mark them down as a loss for you. No right. dogs, baby. No repeat in Montana. No skeleton. It's a very different closet. team than Montana, and also Jimmy Lake got fired. So <laughs> Remember when I told you Jimmy Lake was a bad coach? Yeah, you were right. No one else in Washington <laughs> – Everyone loves hey, Washington. You know what they say. I hit on one in 100. Uh, you do, but I'm the gonna... ones you hit on are insane. <laughs> yeah, no, he does. He makes out. It's because all he does is make outrageous takes. Yeah, probably. all so of them hit you, once. Yo, if Stephen A. Smith ever retires, I got you, man. Put me in that <laughs> no, chair. No, no, no. Did you I hear what, they, do you what happened today on that sticks? show? Someone, <laughs> um, Mad Dog, from Mike the Mad Dog back in the day, he tried to say that Nick Saban was not the best cultural coach of all time. He brought up Era Parsegan. From like the Rudy movie, that's what he brought up as the best college football coach of all time. That's like a Chris Hammond take in terms of this outrageousness. That's what you do. Hey, like they're so ridiculous headlines. that one sticks, and then you seem like a genius. Yeah, when it's like, oh no, the Montana fans thought that Montana would beat you dub. I called it all along. Said Jimmy Lake's terrible coach won't make it through the season. Uh. Loss. I'm giving them a loss as well. UW Same. is no Jimmy Lake's not there anymore. Uh, no Debrea is the man. Uh, he'll get them turned around. They won't be good this year, but they'll be a lot better than Portland. Now State. they're they're going to a bowl game this year. Let's talk to me next year. Vegas, Tyler? Vegas, th- Vegas thinks so. L. L. Yep. They're losing to the they're losing to the bye. Uh, no, they're going to beat the bye just like all the listeners are beaten. The uh, the old subscribe and like button. Smash, smash, smash. Beat, beat, beat. 70 to zero. Moving on to week four at Wog Riz. They have snuck up on the old Grizzlies a couple times under Barnum in the old Wog Riz, yeah. including Bobby Applett. No Davis Alexander, so L. Yeah, they lost their tough guy. Uh, yeah, not this year. Montana is... Hesitant to say back, but uh, better than they were when Portland State was beating them. Uh, Kyler? Yeah, loss. Jesus, this is a team that is typically the bar. And you guys have them at 0-3, and I have them at 1-2 and as they host Northern Arizona. Which, let's just talk about this. It is week five. First home game. That sucks. That sucks. Mm. They'll be ready for a home game. And if you guys are right... They're 0 and 3. Hard to get mm. up for this game, or this is the turnaround game, Kyler? Or sorry, mm. Alex. They're going to lose to Arizona. Ooh. Ouch. I agree. <laughs> Kyler? 
Yeah, I actually think they are going to lose to NAU. Yep. And they host Lincoln from California. They're an NAIA squad. Alex? Win. Win. Agree. They get their first win of the season from you and second for me in week six. Kyler? Well, they barely got by Western Oregon last year. Mm. Western Oregon versus Lincoln, probably a really good matchup. But you I'm saw that lean- versus simulator? <laughs> I don't. I didn't pay for it this year, but I should look at that. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll take I'll take Portland State in a significant win. Ooh, significant, significant win. That's All a right. significant word to use. There we go. <laughs> then they host Weber State, so they went from not hosting any games the first four weeks to hosting three in a row. Weber State Wildcats at home with we were, wins under their belts. Uh, Alex, we were State. Sh- we were saying it's their revenge. We were saying it's their revenge. Agree. L to Weaver. Tyler? You said L to Weaver? Yeah. The lost. Oh, like the lost, lost two Weaver. Yeah, okay. they'll lose yeah. two Woo! Weaver. Woo! Got a little confuser. Uh, yeah, I think all of Weaver late. State Weekly just got their Twitter fingers going if they heard it the way you did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Weaver State wins. So, yeah, an L. Tough, L. tough time. Jeez, they're not this bad, State. are they? At Idaho. Loss. I think I predicted them to lose to Idaho, so I got to stick with that. Yeah, Island. I did. Loss. Holy smokes. I wonder if when people do their polls, they actually do this. They should start doing this. They do not. They no, they just like go off of vibes. Vibes. They it's literally just take last year's finishes and then mix up the top four. Yeah, it's like all vibes. Do. It's like, eh, I think Montana's a little bit better this year. All right. <laughs> uh, note to self, do better prep for preseason. Uh, at Eastern Washington, Alex, damn cup. Lots. Sorry, this is a rivalry Lots. game. We need more energy. It's a damn cup on the red. Barnum looking for a first win in six years. Kyler, when was the last time they beat you guys? Um, Ten? no, they they've beat us. You know, recently, probably probably five six years ago. Uh, Boatman, do they get it? No. No. Yeah, I think they beat us in 2015. Um, whatever year that was. I so no, no, they, they don't win it. They don't win again. Mm. Uh, Northern Colorado, Bowman. Mm. Win. They get a win here. I agree. After now, I don't remember how I picked in that. I think I picked Portland State to win. Um, if I didn't, after now doing a deep <laughs> snorkel dive into this old roster. Uh, yeah, Portland State has a better roster than Northern Colorado at this moment. Kyler? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Portland State, they show up big and win by seven. Ooh, big. Big, big. <laughs> Smash that Don't six and a half points. Don't go over, spend it all in one place. All right, I will say this. We did not win any Portland State fans on this episode. No. <laughs> I'm more worried. We've been getting a lot of coach and player follows. Hopefully they found us entertaining. Probably not. We're not very likable. Uh, Sac State, Alex. You know, here's the thing. Number seven, actually- Sac State. It's yeah, cool. I actually weirdly feel like Portland That's State's going to win this game. Like, just like this is going to be like a weird 2 p.m. kickoff in mid November, right? Sac State. I, this is one thing I'm going to pick Portland State for, then forget about, and then come back and pick Sac State again when I do this for Sac State, like what you've been doing. But I'm going to pick Portland State. I think I'm just going to go with Portland State. Let's do it. All right, uh, I'm trying to keep this to be as reliable as possible. I believe I – well, no, I haven't picked Sac State yet. No. But I believe when we get to Sac State, I will pick Sac State. So I agree with mm-hmm. you. I think this could be one of them trap goal – those old trap games. I just think uh, but I'm, I'm going to give the old uh, the old L here and give the Stingers a win. St- Stingers new, up. New, new leaf, new hive for Chris. He's turned a new hive. Uh, Kyler? Yeah, uh, they lost to Sac State last year by 30. Sac State pretty much returns everyone. And Oregon lost Davis – or Portland State lost oh, Davis right. Alexander. So um, I don't think they're somehow going to make up that 30-point gap. You're but it's right. going to be closer than last year. No, so give me I, Portland – or give I'm, me Sac ch- State. Change me, Chris. I, yeah, that's an idiotic. <laughs> that's a, I, I, I want pure vibes. 
I don't think they can make up a 30-point gap. Yeah, I went pure vibes. That was uh, all that. All right. Vibes. Then they end their year at San Luis Abismo. Worst this places a, to end. This was a close game last year. It's a great place to end your season. Just yeah, take it off the rest of the time. Go to the beach. You ain't making the playoffs. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't give uh, Portland State only two wins, so I'll go, Cal, I'll go Portland State. I just can't give them only two wins. I agree. I think they beat Cal Poly, I believe, in the Cal Poly preview. I picked Portland State to win here, so I'm keeping it consistent. And to be fair, at a 4-7 and seven record on my stakes, that's probably what I would have guessed they got. Uh, I just wouldn't have guessed that they all came spaced multiple losing streaks between. You know uh, what? I, I don't I don't care. After this episode, Bruce Barnum is on the hot seat. They are losing to Cal Poly. Go both. 2-9? 2-9. Two and nine. Two two and and nine. Nine. With a win versus NAIA school. Portland State are clutching their dots pretzels after that. Gosh, their schedule is brutal, though. I like how when I was reading this, the very first game, I'm like, dude, Portland State has a shot all to go two and nine. (laughs) Portland State has a shot versus FBS team all to go two and nine. What's funny is I have their I have them with the most wins. Once again, San Jose State to start the season. So let's say in my world that does happen, right? You hear the hype now. They beat God. an FCS team. They beat an FCS team. People are high on Portland State. They rattle it off with three losses in four weeks. Then they beat a D2 school, so that won't move the needle at all. Then they do three more losses, beat Northern Colorado, who Kyler and I think are going to win three games, three or four, I think it ended yeah. up in. Then they lose to Sac State, and then they beat Cal Poly. People are going to be like, man, week one was the best week of the season. <laughs> <laughs> so we all ended on no, different – Mark, so Boatman had him at three and eight with wins over Lincoln, Northern Colorado, and Cal Poly. I had him against, as I mentioned, San Jose State, Lincoln, Northern Colorado, and Cal Poly. And then Kyler only has two wins against Lincoln and Northern Colorado. Y'all have more than two wins for sure. I'm the happy medium at three. Yeah. They're going to have more than two wins for sure, but it is what it is. I guess, um, have, I guess you have to see their quarterback. Kid. That's the problem, right? You just they're in that jaded team. spot too, where we started these with the bad teams, and since you don't have any bar to set them on, you kind of like give a lot of the bad teams a little bit of love. You're like, oh yeah, you know Idaho State. It's really big offensive line. Yeah. Looking back, we totally botched the Idaho State one. They're not going to be as good as no. They're going to be. Trash. They were going to be. Well, I think we only predicted like one in ten still, or two and nine. Yeah, but it's not like we gave them credit. We I think I gave them a win. I don't think I would have given them. Yeah. A win. Um, and then you were trying to make them beat Idaho when we just played when we just went for Idaho. Yeah. Well, it's a rivalry <laughs> game. Throw out the records, right? Is that the old saying? Uh, anywho, twenty twenty two takeaways, and let's get out of here. Bowman, what are your takeaways for the Portland State Vikings for their twenty twenty two season? Um, a lot of question marks. Just because of Davis Alexander, I think this is like an overall okay football team every other place. But, I mean, as someone who's had to experience this exact same problem for the last few years, being an Idaho fan, it's not great. And I think that's just the biggest thing is quarterback consistency. And they just are probably not going to have it. Yeah. Yeah. It's fair. Tyler? Yeah. Um, here's what I'll say. The, the 22 takeaway is – I'm definitely wrong in my predictions. Just call this the damn cup uh, bias rivalry. Say whatever you want. Um, You're definitely going to win more than two games. But man, I just, I don't see it. But I know you're going to win more than two. So just my my takeaways, don't listen to me. (laughs) My takeaway is you got a talented roster. You could be a Sac State. Administration, take note. Anyways, find a quarterback. That's my second take. All right, we'll let you guys get out of here, and we'll see you next time with NAU. The rest of your life. We had to do this in, like, literally the second episode. Last time, too. Tyler's talks did the exact same thing. Oh, oh, oh.